Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. In this video, we're going to be focusing on properties of tangents. The first thing we're going to be checking is if a line is tangent to a circle. And one thing we're going to use to help us figure out if a line is tangent to a circle is the idea that in order for a line to be a tangent line, then that line has to be perpendicular to a radius of the circle at the end of the radius. So we're looking for creating right angles. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at some pictures, some examples where we're given a possible tangent and we're given a circle with its radius and we want to check are they making right angles. So let me sketch out a picture that'll go with our first example. So here's what we've got on our picture. This PT is going to be a radius of the circle. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking if this ST segment on the outside is tangent to our circle P. So what we're going to be looking for is we're going to be checking to see if this angle that's happening at point T is a right angle. So if we look at the way this picture is set up, we've got a triangle, and what we're going to do is we're going to check if this triangle is a right triangle by using the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The most important one is that c value that always has to be the biggest length. So in this case, it's 5. So the 3 and the 4 are going to be the other lengths with our triangle. So let's go 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And what we're hoping happens is that the number on the left-hand side is going to equal the number on the right-hand side. That'll tell us that this is a right triangle, which would mean that there's a right angle in there. So then our ST line would be a tangent line to our circle. So if we run through and simplify this down, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and on the right-hand side, 5 squared is 25. Now on the left-hand side, if we add those up, 9 plus 16 is 25. And earlier I mentioned that we were hoping to get the same number on the left side and on the right side. So here we got 25 and 25. So yep, this matches up. That makes this triangle a right triangle, which means this angle T in there is a right angle. So we said in order for ST to be tangent, it would have to make a right angle with the radius of our circle, and it does. So the answer is yes, this is a tangent. This next example is going to be very, very similar to the last one we just did. So first thing I'm going to do is sketch out a picture. Okay, so in this picture, now our radius is AB. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to check if that BC segment is a tangent. So we've already got our triangle drawn out. We're given lengths. We've got 5, 11, and 13. We're going to run the Pythagorean theorem to check to see if this makes a right angle or a right triangle. So in this one, the 13 is the longest side, so that has to be our C value. So I'm going to go 5 squared plus 11 squared equals 13 squared. Now on the left-hand side, 5 squared is 25. 11 squared is 121. And on the right-hand side, 13 squared is 169. Now if we add up the left-hand side, we get 146 equals 169. Now this is not true. The left side does not equal the right side. Okay, this one does not work. So the answer is no, BC is not tangent. We didn't create a right triangle. Our Pythagorean theorem didn't work. So BC cannot be a tangent. Now this example looks a little bit different than the last ones that we were doing. In the last examples, we were given three lengths that made up this triangle, and we were trying to decide if it was a right triangle by using the Pythagorean theorem. Now in this example, what's going to happen is I'm going to tell you that EF is already a tangent of our circle. Now what that means is that it's going to be perpendicular to our radius, which is DE. Now we're still going to be using our Pythagorean theorem, but this time what we want to do, instead of just checking if the Pythagorean theorem works, we want to use the Pythagorean theorem to help us figure out what the length of that r value is, what the length of our radius is. So if we take a look at our picture, our right angle 
is right here at point E. That's going to tell us that the hypotenuse has to be the length from D to F. Now we're actually given two values there. The length from D to the edge of the circle is R. That's a radius. And then from the edge of the circle to point F, that length is 8. So if we're thinking about that total distance, then we would want to add those two individual lengths together. So the length from D to F is going to be R plus 8. Now if we're using the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to have to square this value. And then on the other side, the other lengths of our triangle, we've got an r, so we'll have to square that. And then we've got 12, so we'll also have to square that. So our Pythagorean theorem looks like r plus 8 squared equals r squared plus 12 squared. Now if we're working on simplifying this down, I'm going to work on the right-hand side first because that's going to be easier to work with. There's not much that we can do with the r squared. That's just going to stay as r squared. The 12 squared is 144. Now on the left hand side over here is where things get a little tricky. Having that r plus 8 value and squaring it really means that we're taking r plus 8 times another copy of r plus 8. So I think it's helpful to write out that other copy of the r plus 8. And let's just ignore this squared for a second because squaring something means times itself. Now what we're going to have to do on the left hand side, taking r plus 8 times another r plus 8, that's a foiling problem. So if we take r times r, that's r squared. r times 8 is 8r. Then if we work in the middle, 8 times r is another 8r. And then 8 times 8 is 64. So now we've got this kind of complicated looking equation, but there's some simplifying that we can do. If we look in the middle, 8r plus 8r is just 16r. And we've got the rest of that stuff left over, so r squared and 64. And on the right-hand side, we still have r squared plus 144. Now, we want to get our variables on the same side in order for us to solve this equation. So I'm going to take this r squared that's on the right-hand side and subtract it over to the left-hand side. Now, something nice is going to happen. Those r squareds are going to cancel each other out. So now on the left-hand side, all we have is 16r plus 64 equals, on the right hand side, we just have 144. Now, since we've got our variables on the left hand side, we want to put all of our numbers on the right hand side. So I'm going to subtract this 64 over to the right hand side. So now on the left hand side, all we've got is the 16r. On the right hand side, we've got 80. Last step in order to get r all by itself is going to be to divide by the 16. And if we take 80, divided by 16, we're going to get 5 as that r value. So that's going to be our answer in this one. That's what we wanted to find is the length of that radius. We just went through and used the Pythagorean theorem and did a little solving to find that length to be 5. We've got one more property of tangents that we're going to deal with, and this deals with having an external point, a point on the outside of our circle. So if we've got our circle, let's call it circle C. And this outside point, let's call that point D. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to draw in two tangents. I'm going to draw a tangent up to the top of the circle. Let's call this point E. And I'm also going to draw a tangent down to the bottom of the circle. Let's call that one point F. But they're both going to come from that point D on the outside. Now here's the deal. If we've got two tangents that are extending from a common external point, then those two tangent segments, the one from E to D and the one from F to D, have to be congruent. They have to be exactly the same length. So let's write that out. So again, two tangent segments that come from a common external point have to be exactly the same length. Those things have to be congruent. So here, ED is congruent to FD. So let's use that picture to do an example. Here we've got our two tangents, both extending from point D. We know that the length of ED on top is going to be 28. And we know that the length from F to D is 3x plus 4. And what we want to do is we want to use the fact that these two tangents are congruent to help us figure out what that x value is. Since these lengths are congruent, we're going to set them equal to each other. And now we're just going to work on solving. So first thing I'm going to do is subtract that 4 over to the right-hand side. So we end up getting 3x equals 24. 
in order to get x all by itself, we'll have to divide by the 3, so we end up with an x value of 8. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.